welcome to today's stream. Now, I'm a live streamer that has been live streaming since 2018. Made a lot of mistakes on the way, have learnt from some of my mistakes, but you know. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually gonna show you my actual live streaming setup. I think the best way to start with is we need to dispel some of the myths that are associated with live streaming. Most platforms are allowing people to live stream on them at the moment so whether it's uh, YouTube that I'm on at the moment or Twitch, Facebook, gaming, Instagram, Trovo, all of them. Now the first thing that you need obviously to live stream is mobile phone coverage okay. With your mobile phone coverage if you can't get the download from the mobile you can't convert that into Wi-Fi or you can't use it directly to your phone which is what I started out with. I just started out with an iPhone 6 Plus I think. The best phone that I've used to live stream with is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultranote. Uh, it has 5000 milliampers of battery life. The lenses on here are absolutely second to none. Okay, and I really wish that this was available four years ago when we first started streaming. Now, look, without your mobile phone coverage, you don't have a stream. One of the best software apps that you can use on uh, Android is the um, Australian Phone Towers app, but it's only a guide, right? And as the fact that it's only a guide, the only way you really find out whether you have uh, the coverage to live stream, okay, is to go there, turn your phone on, run a speed test. It's the only way. Before you go and live stream somewhere, you need to go and check your signal coverage, okay? Android is the way to go for me. Biggest headaches with the iPhone that I found personally, whether it's the iPhone 6 Plus right up to the 12 that I had for about two days till I took it back and went, no, nah, no thanks, right? Battery life's important. When it comes to running a live stream, okay, your download will virtually cost you an arm and a leg because if you're streaming at 1080p for any given amount of time, okay, it will chew through your download considerably. If you streamed every day for four to five hours every day in a month, you would quite easily chew through 500 gig of download limit at 1080 pixels at 60 frames per second, okay? So, my advice to you is streaming at 720p is not really too big a deal as over two thirds of users watch streams on mobiles now. There aren't any mobile phone plans that give you enough download to be able to live stream from them. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself a modem. Now this is the Netgear Nighthawk 2 modem. Okay. Now. On Telstra, best thing to do is go and sign up for a modem. Telstra has the best coverage in Western Australia, okay? Far better than Optus and far better than uh, any of the other providers. Don't listen to the advertising that you see on other platforms about Optus. You know, the new 5G for a dollar a day. 5G at the moment is only found in metropolitan cities and the tourist areas, okay? And with that, it's of no interest to you if you're going to live stream outside of metropolitan areas as you need 4G. So what you need to do is you need to change the settings on your Netgear modem to only have 4G, okay? Now, in the back of this modem, there's a little square piece of paper, right? That square piece of paper is like a litmus paper. If that is any color other than the pale white that you see there, okay? Um, what it'll do is that will void your warranty. If you get your Netgear modem, don't get the ZTE modems, okay? Because they overheat and cook just like the old ZTE phones. What you do, okay, is you take the backing off your modem, right? And you take the battery out and you run it from an external battery supply. One of the biggest myths is that you need to get a backpack to be a live streamer, okay? A good backpack cost you about $4,000 US. I got given one by Twitch when I was on the old platform and had nothing but headaches with it, okay? And with your encoder in the backpack, basically what it does is it has two of these modems in there. One's got a Telstra card in it, the other one's got an Optus card. And then on the actual encoder, 
it's got um, a couple of other modems that I think in the old days it was those, was it Verizon from America? They had an international SIM card for $10 a day, got unlimited data, right? And um, what that did was that allowed the encoder just to flicker between all the modems and pick up the one that gave it the best signal, okay? But there were a lot of things that happened with that, but we won't go into it. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to waterproof backpacks, right? Let me show you the easiest way for $15 from Bunnings how to do that. And it's really technical and really just, um, you know, over the top and you spend a lot of time researching this, right? And basically, this is how you waterproof your modem. Now, this will also overheat, but not as badly as it would as if it was in a backpack. All right, so there you go. I've now waterproofed my modem. I've now waterproofed my power supply. The other trick that I recommend for you too, okay, is just get yourself a little bit of electrical tape. Electrical tape's your friend when you live stream, because with electrical tape, what it allows you to do is it allows you to keep connections together on all your equipment. And even if things get a bit rough or you're driving over, you know, um, rough areas and your modem and your power supply bounce, they'll disconnect and you lose your stream, okay? If you want to seriously stream IRL, you need three phones, right? So I have my old S20 Ultra Note that I'm streaming out of at the moment. So just picture that as your streaming phone. So what you do is you have one phone to live stream from that's connected to your modem. Then that way you turn off the mobile data and just connect it to your modem. A second phone here that you want to read the chat from. Get yourself a little wrist mount, okay? Right, so that's your wrist mount, All right? And with this, you can turn the phone however you want it, okay? And the other one is, if you're on a platform and you really want to push your sound alerts and that sort of stuff, because sound alerts is what a lot of streamers use to generate income. That's why you'll go to their stream and you'll have a list a mile along of over 100 or 200 sound alerts so that they get people to um, cheer bits to use the sound alerts or donate, all right? So the third phone you need is one that is connected to the modem as well, and it's also connected to a Bluetooth microphone, all right? So the most important thing when you stream, once you've worked through all of that, okay, is don't ever judge your streaming ability by pixels or algorithm, right, or numbers. So you shouldn't change as a streamer depending on how many numbers you have on your screen, okay? It's not really important because that should not change your content. Your content should be constant right the way through when you do things, all right? Your most important thing is audio, okay? Rode are a great Australian company and it's very rare to be able to uh, promote Australian made products, but I've been using Rode for a couple of years now and it took the content on the streams to another level. Okay. With your Rode microphones, this one's a transmitter, this one's the receiver. You plug the receiver into a Rode SC7 fitting, which has got the um, audio jack on it. Now, most phones are Bluetooth now, so you'll have no audio jack on these. The way you fix that, okay, is you buy yourself a USB-C audio and charge adapter. Let me show you how this works, right? Adapter with audio and charge. So I'll show you how this works. So what you do is, right, you plug this into your road receiver. That plugs into your adapter and then you plug this into your phone. Now this allows me the luxury, right, of while that's still working, okay, I can actually charge my phone from an external power supply. There's, when they say single channel, there's one receiver, right? This is the dual channel receiver, okay? So this is the Rode Wireless Go 2 absolutely phenomenal invention okay and this takes your um, content to another level again as what happens is you put that which one is it you put that on your phone 
you put one of these on the front of your chest, one of these on the back of your shirt, and any way you turn, you've always got your um, signal going to the microphone, okay? And what this does is this takes two um, channels of audio and transforms it into one so that you have even better audio, okay? A bit of bucktail or fox fur or whatever and tape that over your microphone, you can um, get a compressor and blow it over there. There'll be no wind noise or it'll reduce it dramatically, okay? All right, so as with this one too, what you need to do as well, when you put the um, receiver on you like this, you connect that to the Rode Lavalier Go, right? So basically this has a pop shield on it, which reduces wind noise. That's my receiver. That's the cable that's linked to that. Don't have it too close to you, okay? Hey, Benton, how are you? Don't have it too close to you because what will happen is you'll pick up your breathing, right? And then just put it on your um, sort of like here as I've got it. Try and have it so it's not touching any material. It's got air flowing around it, all right? And what that will do is that will allow you to um, basically have crisp, clear um, audio, okay? Is these are all the power banks that I carry with me at all times, all right? Whoops, there goes another microphone. All right, so these are all signets, apart from a couple of here, which is the Otterbox. There were no signets left, so I bought the Otterbox. So what's happened is in the last two or three months, right, this is a 20K charger. That's a 20K charger as well. That's a 27,000, and that's a 15,000, okay? So what's happened is Signet, in their infinite wisdom, have bought out a 30,000 um, milliamp here. Uh, power bank. Wish they had bought that out four years ago as well. Okay, that has multiple um, like uh, set fittings on it in both uh, USB A and USB C. Okay, now initially when you bought these, what they did is they had little um, dots down the side of the power bank to let you know as it was going flat. Whoops, right now. Then they went to a digital display, so I don't know whether you can see that, that stays 100%. These are invaluable, okay? You are able to see exactly how much charge you have left. It doesn't chew that much extra power, okay? And what that does is that allows you to, um, well, basically have the option of charging your um, phone, microphone, whatever modem, okay? Uh, with these now so what I'll do is I'll just show you remember when I said you can charge your um, phone and still use the microphone these microphones have USB-C points on them there okay you can only charge the phone or the microphone you can't do both at the same time right so with this here that's your C fitting there that's your C fitting there okay so what will happen is, right, that's going to charge my phone now while I'm using the microphone, okay? And that's on, um, that's on fast charge or on super fast charge, okay? One thing I forgot to mention before is phone mounts, okay? We'll just uh, backtrack a bit. This is a Joby, or Joby if you're Scottish, um, tripod mount. Your best friend when you live stream a Manfrotto phone mount. So they have a universal fitting on the top. What this does is that goes in there, right, like so. It's got the little level, and then what you do when you want to live stream is, ta-da, right, that's how you live stream. Hang everything else off there. That's what I've been using the whole time I've been streaming with the phone, okay? And the good thing about these is you can actually modify these to fit any shape. See, so if you've got a tree branch, or if you've got, I don't know, a fence post, or you've got a motorbike, or you've got whatever, with these little octopus legs, okay, you can mould them, right, to any shape and any angle. See, you just move it like that, and it's instant, and all the rest of the stuff, right, da -da. and then that allows you to live stream virtually anywhere, okay. And that's what I've been using for most of the time that I've been live streaming there. So people, thank you very much. I hope this has been informative. Hopefully the VOD gets a bit of traction, you know. 
it'll be nice to get a bit of traction and then as we start off our YouTube journey and all that sort of thing, right? And um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave. Um... Oh yeah, I know resist. I was going through a bad patch then, mate, and then you know, now I'm not, so it's all good. But um, yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it, famo? You know, that's a good thing about time. It sort of reveals everything. But, um, you know, life goes on either way. All right, famo, thanks very much. Thanks for giving up your time to come in and watch. I hope this will make life easy for you into transition to IRL streaming. And on top of that, thank you very much for giving up your time to come in and watch, okay? So I'm going to sign out now. Thank you. I might actually just play this YouTube VOD on Twitch. That would probably be a good idea, you know? So we can work from there. All right, bye for now. Thanks for the support, famo. I assure you that I'm going to reward you with some really good content over it, okay? And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.